Good morning, everybody. We are back. John De La Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. And we're coming at you with a top five mothers in comics. I've already messed up this video because I am not good at YouTube. And so you probably saw some sidebar stuff. Ignore that for now so we can talk about these as they come up and pretend like you're uh, just discovering this for the first time. So <laughs> that's my editing trick right there. I'm just I'm just telling you not to remember what you just saw. There you go. All right. So I'm going to go into the top five mothers for Mother's Day because uh, why not? It's fun. Um, it was an interesting list to come up with. Uh, I came up with three of them very easily. And then after that, it was like, hmm, there's not that many like great families in comics so much if you if you think about it. Um, and so you really have to kind of go back and really uh, discover some different things and figure out some good uh, examples. Uh, and I think part of that is because of, you know, sort of the modern deconstructionist hero stuff, which we can get into in another video. And we talk about quite a bit on here. So I'm going to ignore that for now and just talk about these great mothers in comics. All right. For the number five, we will talk about Speedball and his mother, Madeline Naylor. Um, she is in the Speedball comic in Ditko's version of things, not not later on, to be clear, because uh, these comics tend to change depending on who's writing things, of course. She's pretty great. She uh, she and and uh, Speedball's father don't exactly understand what Robbie Baldwin's going through because this is an 80s comic. and That's what happens. And they're kind of caught up in their own world. They argue quite a bit, but it, it's always like uh, philosophical, lighthearted. And uh, and the family loves each other at the end of the day and really just wants to protect each other. You see, even though the mother is oblivious of Speedball's activities, that she cares about Robbie. She wants to push him in a direction where he will expand upon his uh, his own artistry and uh, and his own creativity. And I appreciate that. Uh, so while that is her singular focus as a character, that is um, a noble thing. And I appreciate uh, mothers and family members who um, care about artistry and care about expression of ideas because, uh, you know, that's important to me. All right. So I think that's pretty good right there. Next, we will move on to Mary Jane Watson Parker. You'd be like, what? Mary Jane Watson Parker is a mother? And yes, she is. In the Adventures of Spider-Girl by Tom DeFalco, the greatest writer of all time and the greatest comic book of all time, uh, Mary Jane plays uh, May Parker's mother, uh, and, and Peter's grown up and, and has lost a leg. Isn't Spider-Man anymore. Mary Jane's at home and she knows that, uh, May ha is becoming a superhero and going out and being Spider-Girl. And then for a while, you know, Peter and Mary Jane really don't support it. And, uh, they, they want to protect her on that level. But after they realize that she's going to be just like her father and be one of those great power and great responsibility types, Mary Jane is very supportive uh, of of Spider Girl and uh, is a great caring mother. She is uh, the it, the family in there is just dynamic. It's just a wonderful, wonderful thing that I don't see in comics very much, which is part of why I love this series so much. And you see on this cover right here, no one hurts my little girl. She's even without powers going to step in front of Spider Girl to protect her young daughter. That is an amazing thing. Um, I don't know. I uh, would be a little concerned if my mother was wearing a short skirt and knee high boots like that. But, you know, this is comic books. So. <laughs> All right. Number three, Sue Storm. Speaking of uh, mothers who have worn inappropriate costumes from time to time. This is not it. I'm not putting her. I, I'm not putting in that. Uh, <laughs> the the ultimate 90s, uh, you know. What, what was that costume? You know what I'm talking about if, you, if you've read comics. Anyway, Sue Storm is a caring mother who uh, dotes on Valerie and Franklin in the Fantastic Four. Um, it's actually one of the few comics where children have been around for a while. They're not really retconned out. And uh, Sue Storm just acts as a solid mother um, who's very loyal to the family, very loyal to her children, uh, and will do anything for them. She is an inspirational hero in that regard for sure easy stuff and even easier aunt may now i included a non-biological mother in this yes uh but for all intents and purposes aunt may raised peter uh by herself uh after ben's death uh and kept him going even through the poor times and through the bad times and she uh is just the sweetest old lady 
who is just the most wonderful, wonderful person anybody could be to a uh, growing son. So it's pretty good. Um, and yeah, I mean, Aunt May really needs no introduction. She's in every issue. She is uh, Peter's heart and soul in these comics and for good reason. So she uh, she is just a uh, an example of being a graceful person who is just uh, caring and um, wonderful. So that's it. I wish there was more to say. It's it's interesting when there's positive things all the time. It's like it's like we we don't have a, enough descriptors for it. But when there's negative things, it's very easy to talk about things for hours. Isn't that an interesting part of human psychology? But yes, Aunt May uh, is a wonderful character and has been around for a long time. And we'll go to number one. So we've had four Marvel characters, um, and that's just because I couldn't think of that many DC. Uh, families or mothers uh, involved in things. But uh, these were all pretty solid examples. And uh, DC actually takes the cake, though, uh, when it comes down to it. And that's with Martha Kent. And Martha Kent uh, is, uh, again, just uh, very, you know, similar to Aunt May in ways. But uh, she's much more of a country lady, much, much uh, a little bit stronger of a woman, uh, I would say. And uh, she uh, is very supportive of Clark understands his uh, role as Superman and uh, is very caring and she'll, she'll go so far that I even read the, uh, the Supergirl uh, series where she actually traveled out to go see Supergirl and talk to the, talk to her parents about having a super child to be, to support Clark Kent's, you know, budding friend in Supergirl. So pretty good stuff. And, and she actually took care of Supergirl from time from, for a time uh, at the matrix version uh, in that DC universe. Uh, and it, it's all because she just cares about Clark so much. So that level of self-sacrifice, that level of care for others is exactly why mothers are great and why, uh, and, and exactly what we want out of a character who is a mother. Very, very beautiful stuff. All right. Well, that's it. That's my top five list. What do you think? Did I, did I have a good top five list? Do you have a better top five list? You can leave it down in the comments below. I also want to point out my Flying Sparks uh, comic, um, which is on Amazon now. I've got eight, eight issues up plus this number zero issue. Um, so if you, I'm going to put the link to the, the series down below. But um, if you, uh, you have to search for the number zero issue, they don't include it in series on Amazon. But uh, Chloe, uh, Metagirl, has had a good upbringing. And even though I have not shown her parents yet in the book, and I say yet because they're going to come to visit at some point, she's a character who's in college and she has an apartment taken off. You know, she's living on her own uh, for the first time. And so uh, eventually her parents are going to visit. But uh, I, I have imagined the character to have a good upbringing, a good mother, and a, a solid family behind her, which is why she has grown up to uh, be a sort of a selfless hero as she is. All right, uh, hit that like and subscribe button, and I will be back soon with some more comic-related videos and fun. Bye, guys.